Welcome everyone. Welcome to this edition of Meditations of Tuesday of the second week of Lent. I'm with your, uh, or our host here. I'm Father Mark Maxson with Cheryl Sarkeesian. And thank you for joining us on this program. And, and today we read from the, um, the book of the prophet Isaiah, who talks to us about, but you know, the first three weeks of Lent form a, a liturgical unit and each Mass has a basic teaching on the spiritual life and as pre presented for our meditation. Today's teachings tell us to be aware of hypocrisy in religious life. We must avoid the trap of appearing religious in order to impress other people. As a matter of fact, it's our way of life. It should be through humility, gentle, and meekness as Jesus Christ is. So as we begin in opening prayer, allow us the presence of Christ to be in our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, watch over your church and guide it with your unfailing love. Protect us from what could harm us and lead us to what will save us. Help us always, for without you we are bound to fail. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. From the book of the prophet Isaiah, you know, the, the words in the readings today attack the hypocrisy in religion. Isaiah calls the national leaders, princes of Sodom and Gomorrah, or which were ancient wicked cities, to describe the wickedness of the entire nation. He calls then for people to change. And so we read from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 10, and verses 16 through 20. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wronged. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they be crimson red, that they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, the sword shall consume you. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we also celebrate uh, the feast day of St. Catherine Drexel, uh, one of the American saints. And Catherine was uh, born in Philadelphia in 1858. Her father was an international banker. And in that, um, she was drawn to a life of uh, voluntary poverty. Because of her wealth, she decided to use her, her, her vast resources for the helping of, of the poor and needy. In, uh, in other words, that uh, you know, she gave her life for the helping of, of the, those in um, the Indian reservations, uh, as well as uh, different um, uh, areas in the United States. And she founded, um, after three and a half years of training, the Sisters of the Blessed Sacraments for Indians and Colored, and opening a boarding school in Santa Fe. And then a string of foundations followed, and by, by 1942, she had a system of uh, uh, African-American Catholic schools in 13 states, plus 40 mission centers, 23 rural schools. Although segregationists harassed her work, even burning a school in Pennsylvania, she established 50, min 50 missions for Indians in 16 states against all odds and against the you know, what was contrary to uh, the teachings of what God calls us, even as what we've learned in Isaiah, to care for the widows and the orphans and the poor. She gave her life to help those of the poor. She passed on in, uh, um, 19, in the 1970s, uh, is my understanding. What her quote is, uh, patient and humble endurance of the cross, Whatever nature it may be, it is the highest work we have to do. So how far I am at 84 years of age, and being an image of Jesus in his sacred life on earth. 
I should say uh, her, um, she passed on in 1955, so fairly recent, but in the sense of she gave her life in humble service to those in love and forgiveness. And, and that, I think, is what Isaiah calls us. Uh, uh, and what, what is the you know, failure of the, of the princes and the people of that time period of where they have not taken care uh, of those in need of justice and those who are poor? And it warns against, you know, what happens in this society. Uh, what, what a terrible crime it is when the orphan and the widow are ignored. And I think there is where it calls for, for people then, for, for them to be faith-filled is, is to, to live a life in response to God's, you know, need and love and mercy for his people. And being part of that is that, you know, to follow this invitation then through the prophet. Because it's an invitation that says, come now and let us set things right. It's courtroom language at that time period. And God is summoning the leader and his people to a legal dispute, you know, and it, because it's a condemnation upon those accused. If they're not willing to obey God's command and live according to, to the demands for justice, and God will, you know, call them on that. For God calls them to forgive in order for them to for, uh, prosper. If they do not, God will then consume them. You know, in the sense that God will not allow a compromise on this matter. This is an issue of justice. This is an issue of goodness and mercy. It's the issue of, of covenant in this sense in Isaiah. You know, the, cha the first chapter of Isaiah really calls then the people, you know, to listen to the wise advice of the prophet. It says that in that church chapter, cease doing evil, learn to do the good. You know, and instead of being two different commands, you know, in a sense that this is actually, you know, what it is to be the people of God, to do the good and to reform one's life. How do you see what Isaiah is calling us to do? Well, there was a particular verse in here that stuck with me, and that was, if you are willing and, obe and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. Um, well, what land is he talking about? Well, I think he's talking about heaven. But mm -hmm. we have to be willing and we have to obey. And if we're not willing to listen to the word of God, to listen to those instructions that he gives to us and then say, okay, I'm now going to obey what you ask of me, then I can't eat of the land of, and the, the, you know, the, the good things in the land of heaven. Um, mm -hmm. That stuck out with me. The rest of it was like, okay, God's saying your sins may be really bad, but you know what, I'm, I'm really good. So let come to me, come to me, don't stay away, because I can take your sins and I can make them white as wool. Mm -hmm. Come to me. Okay. Are you willing and will you obey? Wonderful metaphor. White as snow, white as wool, mm -hmm. you know, taking that and changing it in life. And it's also in our, our Lenten action in practice, you know. So an example would be like breaking a bad habit. You know, sometimes it might be, you know, uh, seem impossible swearing or biting our nails, you know, we're not aware of it, you know, but it's actually this, this conscious action, you know, ceasing evil, you know, in, in, do, in remedy doing the good, right, what this, this, this passage calls us, it's a, it's, instead of concentrating on our, you know, biting our nails or what we say, you know, why, why can't we focus on other, what is the good of other people, or writing little notes to people, doing something with our hands, you know, it, it's, let's not make the same mistake. Cease doing what is evil, yes, but learn how to do what is good through the will of God, and that is through the love mm -hmm. and mercy of God. Always be in your life. Mm -hmm. May you be blessed and have a wonderful day. God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen.